Everything coming up tonight on TV5 News at 8. I'm Mark Espadakis, and coming up next, Clarion University students protest the possibility of a strike. Details straight ahead. And teachers in the Wilkinsburg School District will be returning to their classrooms tomorrow. We'll have that story. I'm Don Ersichin. Coming up, we'll take a look at the baseball races as they start heating up and the NBA loses one of its greats. And in tonight's health feed, find out how to lower your chances of getting empathy. That's coming up. I'm Jennifer Vivino in the TV5 Weather Center. Will rain ruin our weekend? The five-day forecast coming right up. And when do you celebrate Halloween? Find out when some local communities will be celebrating it. All this and more as TV5 News brings coverage closer to home. to prevent child abuse. Our organization has some very simple beliefs. Children should be safe, cared for, nourished, and loved. Simple. We also believe that child abuse can be prevented before it ever occurs. Call the National Committee to Prevent Child Abuse at 1-800-CHILDREN to find out how. 1-800-CHILDREN. Five News, bringing coverage closer to home. Good evening and welcome to TV5 News. I'm Christy Herman. And I'm Dave Marsh. Mark Despotakis joins us live from the TV5 newsroom with tonight's top story regarding the student walkout. Mark? Thanks, Dave. Well, as contract talks continue into a new faculty contract, students have now gotten into the mix of this. It's tonight's top story. <laughs> with a simple toot of the horn, students and residents are showing their support for faculty at Clarion University. In recent weeks, we have heard a lot of talk about the possibility of a faculty strike at the 14 state system of higher education schools. Well, today, students came out to voice their opinions on the contract talks. I wish all the students would come out because it's going to affect them if they go on strike too. It's not just us right here, it's the whole campus, the whole state system. As you can see behind me, students are demonstrating in front of the university's administrative building to show their support for ABSCO. The student demonstration took place between 9 and 4 today, and according to the organizer, provided a forum for students to express their views on the contract negotiations. This is my education. I'm a consumer. This is big business. And I would like to get my education. I'd like to get what I'm paying for. The demonstration took place outside of Carrier Hall in order to let the Clarion administration and community know that the students support the faculty. I spoke with Clarion University President Dr. Diane Reinhardt about her reaction to the demonstration. I, I believe that students have the right to, to, to say to the public and to their colleague students how they feel about um, the negotiations. And so I think that, that that's a, a right and um, a responsibility that students have. And the latest word on negotiations is that tomorrow at 6.30 in Harrisburg, there will be another round of contract negotiations and reports indicate that there was progress made at last weekend's talks. Live in the newsroom, I'm Mark Despotakis. Back to you, Dave. Thanks, Mark. A Leaper area teenager waived his rights to a preliminary hearing on Tuesday. Nathan Lowe of Leaper is charged with aggravated assault, reckless assault, reckless endangerment, harassment, stalking, and criminal mischief. Lowe reportedly hit a woman with a baseball bat on August 28th. Witnesses report that the teenager accused a woman of stealing $70 from him. And a 65-year-old Knox woman pleaded guilty on Tuesday to disorderly conduct. She struck another woman in the head with a metal cane. Nancy J. Barnett has agreed to pay a $100 fine plus court costs. She will also receive 90 days probation. The 62-year-old victim told police she and Barnett were in the hospital discussing a patient's situation. The patient was Barnett's daughter. She then became enraged and acted out violently. Michael Hutchinson will now face charges related to the death of his wife. Brenda Hutchinson was killed in a fatal car crash on Route 36 on May 22nd. Her husband swerved their pickup truck off the road and crashed into a stop sign and two mailboxes before hitting an embankment and flipping the vehicle. Hutchinson will likely face charges that he is driving under the influence of alcohol. Hutchin Hutchinson was held over for trial on Tuesday after a preliminary hearing on charges of homicide by the vehicle while driving under the influence, aggravated assault while intoxicated, and numerous other traffic violations. Jury selection began on Tuesday for the trial of a former Shippenville man. David Penwell is accused of murdering a Pleasantville man and robbing a Silverly woman in a crime spree last year. 
Seven jurors have been selected from the pool of 173. Seven others have turned away. Five women, including a teacher, a student, a camera operator, a supervisor, and a retiree, as well as two men, a maintenance worker, and a restaurant employee, were among those picked. The trial is scheduled to begin Monday, and 12 jurors and three alternatives are needed. Selection is expected to continue throughout the week. And testimony continues today in the shooting death of an officer. 19-year-old Timothy Williams is accused of killing Officer Stephen German on February 20th. The incident occurred during a traffic stop. Williams is expected to testify in his own defense. Pennsylvania State Data Center released statistics saying more people died in the area than were born here in 1997. Two years ago, over 3,000 people were born in the Venango, Clarion, Forest, Crawford, and Mercer counties. During that same time period, just over 50 more people died than were born here. Evidence is pointedly a steady population decline in the region over the last several years. The data does not reflect a migration in and out of the area. Tourism promotion will become more effective in three merging areas. Magic Forest is merging with the Forest County Tourist Promotion Bureau and the Elk County Visitors Bureau to become the largest tourist promotion agency in the state. The new name is not official, but it will save money for the agencies. A fenced-in acre is in the middle of a small strand of old-growth forest. This area is part of a program to study and demonstrate the effects of deer browsing on the regeneration of forest. The concept is to keep white-tailed deer from eating the shoots of new growth within the fenced area. Government agencies from around Pennsylvania agreed that the deer overpopulation was an issue that needed attention. The park land includes tracks along the Clarion River, areas around Cook Cemetery, and by the fire tower. And in Farmington Township, residents turned up at a special public hearing to show support for the establishment of a community park near Tylersburg and Leeper. County Landfill Incorporated officials are questioning the $140,000 land purchase. The 118-acre property between Tylersburg and Leeper along Route 36 was approved last month. And concerns about noise, dust, and railroads are a main issue. Yet local community support from Girl Scout and Boy Scout troops, plus support from the residents, may be enough to override the decision. And coming up after the break, find out the latest enrollment figures here at Clarion University. And yet, another regional high school basketball player is being mourned by students and family. Plus, the Wilkinsburg area teachers should be returning to school tomorrow. All this and more as TV5 News brings coverage closer to home. Early years, young children cannot stand on their own. Uniting parents and children is an important part of the life of a community. Stand for Children encourages people to make a personal commitment to stand for the health of children. 300,000 Americans marched in Washington, D.C. last June to support Stand for Children Day. Stand for Children seeks to lift the belief that children need our help to stand. I'm the man. It's my birthday. Exercised lately. <sighs> go for a mouthful. Go for the fun. Oh, go for go candy. Go for candy for everyone. Just one stack is what it takes. And it's go for, go for, go for cakes. Open wide. Stuff your face. There's always room for more. Go for cakes. Empty the box. Every Till you explode. Exercise lately. Till you explode. Sad looking back now, the things you go through in life. Scary. The worst thing about being on welfare was kids, what they really wanted. I had to get a better life for my girls and myself. I got off welfare. I got a good job. Makes me the happiest mother in the world. I live for my girls. We're not asking you to hire everyone on welfare, just one. This is TV5 News at 8, anchored by Christy Herman. Dave Marsh. Jan Bevavino with TV5 Weather. Don Ursich with Sports. Now from the news team bringing coverage closer to home, this is TV5 News. Welcome back to TV5 News. Joining us now is Jeff Say from the Clarion Call with a look at the highlights from tomorrow's issue. Jeff? Two. Good evening. Stories slated to appear in the October 14th issue of the Clarion Call include an update on the negotiations between APSCUF and the state system. A student demonstration was held today in front of Becht Hall and results of Autumn Lease Food Stock Drive. For TV5 News, I'm Jeff Say. Thanks, Jeff. Clarion University enrollment keeps increasing. Enrollment 
topped over 6,000 students this semester. Across Pennsylvania, enrollment is up for the third straight year. Clarion is among seven of the other universities that posted gains. Statistics show that there is now over 95,088 students enrolled at the state systems universities this fall. Members of the Clarion County Council for Economic and Community Development decided to not help pay for television advertisers to promote holiday shopping in Clarion. Criticism came from several council members expressing concerns about promoting all aspects of the county. Areas including education, shopping, and quality of life were discussed. The holiday campaign proposal will continue, but suggestions for another video promoting to the public outside of the area are also being heard. One person is in critical condition following an early morning auto collision today in Columbian County. It happened around 1.30 a.m. on Route 42 north of Route 404 in Hemlock Township near Bloomsburg. Police say 26-year-old Audrey Sprinkle collided with a car going in the opposite direction. Her car rolled onto its roof. The other car caught on fire. It was driven by 35-year-old Robert Jacoby Jr. of Claysville. Sprinkle, Jacoby, and Jacoby's three passengers were all taken to area hospitals. Sprinkle is listed in critical condition, Jacoby and his passengers are listed in satisfactory condition, and another passenger, Ross Mayola, was being treated in the emergency room. The final passenger is in stable condition. Friends of a high school basketball star who died from brain injuries sustained in a car accident remembered her with a morning prayer and a memorial service at school this morning. The Reverend Leo Lynch, president, president and principal of Bishop Guilfoyle High School in Altoona, says the service for 17-year-old Lynette Williams was somber and moving. Williams had just transferred to the Roman Catholic School from Hollidaysburg Area High School in a controversial transfer for her senior year. Paul Gallagher, superintendent of the Hollidaysburg School District, says counselors and social workers are available today to help students handle their grief. A four-year-old Erie boy who was injured in an early morning house fire is being treated in Pittsburgh this morning. His mother and one-year-old sister were both injured while jumping from a second floor window. The fire began around 2 a.m. Fire crews arrived to find Cassandra Berinda, who was pregnant, lying on the front cement entryway to her home with her daughter nearby. The boy was flown to Children's Hospital in Pittsburgh for treatment. His condition is not being released. Berinda is in fair condition this morning. Her daughter is expected to be released from the hospital today. Wilkinsburg teachers return to school tomorrow while court-supervised contract negotiations begin. Classes are to start at their regular times, and contract talks will also begin tomorrow morning in the City County Building in downtown Pittsburgh. The court will retain jurisdiction over the case until it is resolved. The teachers have not yet had a contract since 1994. More than 150 teachers began their walkout on September 7th. Some 2,000 students will attend classes for the first time this year when the teachers return. The top prosecutors in Pittsburgh say that two people tried to sway a district justice's race by flooding the polls with absentee ballots. Cynthia Hatajic was charged with conspiracy, forgery, and election law violations. John Thompson was charged with conspiracy, both live in Harrison Township near Tarentum in northeast Allegheny County. Allegheny County District Attorney Stephen Zapala Jr. says Thompson was Hatajic obtained absentee ballots by mail and voted for a challenger in the May primary for the Harrison Township District Justice race. Zapala says he does not know if the 81 ballots by the pair made a difference. U.S. Airways says talks between the airline and Allegheny County over a proposed maintenance center are progressing, but there is still no timetable for completion. U.S. Airways Chairman Stephen Wolf says the airline is not looking to move its maintenance operations from Pittsburgh and is negotiating exclusively with local officials. The airline needs the maintenance center to accommodate the larger airplanes it is upgrading to in coming years. Some local officials feared that United States Airways could move its maintenance operations to another city if Pittsburgh didn't come up with the funds and incentives needed to help build the $604.5 million center. And when TV5 News returns, the nuclear test ban treaty faces red tape, and the tobacco industry offers what is deemed as a long overdue apology. And there is more news in the headlines aimed at smokers, plus the government is after cigarette makers for deceptive advertisements. All this and more as TV5 News bring coverage closer to home. The new frequent phone hours. Use the phone just eight hours a week and get this free phone cradle. Use it 12 hours and get a speaker phone. Use it 15 hours and get this cool headset. Or stay on the phone 20 hours a week and get a pasty complexion, flabby body, and, and a, a great, great new nickname at school. Exercise lately. to be there. I want my mother to be there. My hair is going to be done so beautiful. A lot of music, a nice blue dress. I want to be beautiful for every single person that goes there.
If I got shot, I want to have a nice funeral. Every day, 10 children are killed by gunfire. Help stop the violence. Call 1-800-WE-PREVENT for free information. Not one more lost life. Not one more grieving family. Not one more. It's not just about making plans. It's about making a difference. And taking an interest, not just earning it. At Ed Bell, more than investing. It's about knowing you. My hand. Investing in you and your dreams. In Clarion, see Gary Martin located on Main Street, phone 226-7896. Welcome back to TV5 News. There is still no agreement that would prevent a vote later today on the nuclear test ban treaty. Republicans in the Senate are said to be standing in the way of a deal that would postpone the vote and avert what is certain to be a foreign policy embarrassment for the White House. Republicans say the treaty is fatally flawed and should be voted down now. Democrats insist such a defeat would send the wrong message to the rest of the world about nuclear testing. And the White House says Philip Morris' admission is long overdue. The tobacco company acknowledged for the first time that smoking is a likely cause of cancer and heart disease and it is addictive. The admission was made on the company's website, but White House Press Secretary Joe Lockhart says Philip Morris has only acknowledged what the American public has known for a long time. Lockhart adds that the company must still answer for the decades of deceptive advertising. The Clinton administration has filed suit against cigarette makers seeking to recover billions in what it calls ill-gotten gains. A Colombian drug lord and 29 others have been arrested in a major drug trafficking sweep. Colombian police chief says a leader of the once powerful Medellin cartel and the others were taken into custody last night. Most of the arrests were made in Colombia, but suspects were also seized in Ecuador, Mexico, and the United States. All of these people are wanted for extradition to the U.S. Colombian police chief says that the arrests cap a year-long investigation dubbed Operation Millennium, considered the most important blow to drug traffickers in Colombia since 1995 arrests of the leaders of the Call Cocaine Cartel. A top U.S. official says the government will cooperate fully with South Korea's investigation into allegations that American GIs killed hundreds of Korean refugees early in the Korean War. Assistant U.S. Secretary of State Stanley Roth made the pledge during meetings with South Korea's foreign minister and defense minister. In a written statement, Roth said it's absolutely clear that the two governments agree on the need for a thorough, complete, and transparent investigation. This comes on the heels of an Associated Press story that American war veterans confirmed accounts by South Korean villagers who said they saw U.S. forces shooting civilians under a railroad bridge in South Korea in July of 1950. In tonight's Health Beat, 82% of chronic lung diseases are caused by smoking. Emphysema is one of these. Research has shown that quitting smoking can prevent the occurrence and decrease the progression of emphysema. The disease is ranked among 15th of the chronic conditions that contribute to the activity limitations. The American Lung Association research shows that diseases do does not de develop suddenly. It happens over time with exposure to cigarette smoke. You can help prevent this from happening by proper nutrition, regular exercise, a good night's sleep, and by quitting smoking. For more information, please contact the Clarion Hospital. And joining us now is Jen Bevavino from the TV5 Weather Center with your latest forecast. Jen? Precipitation hovering above us at the moment. We will be seeing thunderstorms tonight and tomorrow morning. I'd also like to mention at this moment that we are under a severe thunderstorm watch in Clarion County. This includes some, some heavy winds, some heavy hailstones, some cooler temperatures, just so you're aware of this. Taking a look at our, our front snap, you'll notice that we are in a high pressure system at the moment. So we will be seeing temperatures rise high into the middle to upper 60s throughout the rest of the week. Taking a look now at our precipitation map, you'll notice that clearly on the map, it does show that we were, we were supposed to have rain showers today. Fortunately for us, though, we were clear of any showers today, but we'll be seeing some tonight and tomorrow. Taking a look at our highs map, you'll notice we were high into the upper 60s today, and hopefully we'll be seeing those temperatures rise throughout the rest of the week. Taking a look at our lows map now, you'll notice that we are low into the lower 50s region today, and hopefully we will be seeing those temperatures rise a little bit, although around Saturday, Sunday, we will be seeing temperatures falling into the lower 40s region. Taking a look at our five-day planner now. You'll notice for Thursday, 
the high will be 52, the low will, low will be 43. It will be partly cloudy um, with a chance of thunderstorms. For Friday, sunny, a high of 62, a low of 30. For Saturday, cloudy once again with a high of 65, a low of 40. For Sunday, rain showers once again with a high of 57, a low of 43. And for Monday, it will be partly sunny with a high of 60 and a low of 40. And that's Clarence's current and extended weather conditions. Back to you, Dave and Christy. Thanks, Jen. And coming up after the break, Don Ersich gives us his take on the world of sports in two minutes. Also, Nani Lombard will give us her stand on the latest movie releases, and Carolyn Kelly joins us with the community calendar. All this and more as TV5 News brings coverage closer to home. Crowd is easy when you stop in at Fashion Bug, located in a Clarion Mall. Whether you're looking for junior trendy, girls, or fashion for women, they have it all with many different styles. With our newly expanded shoe and accessory department, you're surely to find that special touch to enhance that new outfit. And if you have a fashion question, our experts are here to help. That's Fashion Bug, located in the Clarion Mall, just off exit 9 of Interstate 80. Open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. till 9 p.m. Sunday from noon till 5. Every day, 10 children are killed by gunfire. You can help stop the violence. Call 1-800-WE-PREVENT. Not one more lost life. Not one more grieving family. Not one more. Gone to graveyards one by one. Oh, when will we ever learn? News travels fast. That's why you need the speed and accuracy of a news team that brings coverage closer to home. Every Tuesday and Wednesday night, join TV5 News for Clarion's only live local newscast on television at 8. Tune in for the latest in regional, state, and national news. Plus, with our newspaper exchange partner, the Clarion News, teaming up to bring coverage closer to home every Tuesday and Wednesday at 8 p.m. Clarion's only live local newscast on television at 8 is here on TV5. Hi, I'm Don Ersich, here again with the Sports in Two Minutes. In shocking news yesterday, basketball great Wilt Chamberlain died of a heart attack at his home in Bel Air. He was one of the greatest in the NBA and still holds close to 30 records, including his famous 100-point game. He was 63 years old. Now let's take a look at baseball, where the league championship series are underway. Behind a strong performance by Greg Maddox, the Braves held on to beat the Mets and take Game 1 by the score of 4-2. And in the American League, the Red Sox go into Yankee Stadium after coming back from a 0-2 deficit in the Cleveland series. This will be the first meeting between the two teams in the playoffs. It is sure to be an interesting one. College football had some great games last weekend, and this week's AP and coaches polls definitely show it. Taking a look at the ESPN coaches poll, Florida State is at number one, Penn State is at number two, Nebraska at number three, Virginia Tech moved up the spot to four, and Tennessee is ranked number five. As for the AP poll, the top four are the same, but Michigan State moves into the number five spot with a win last week over what is now number 10, Michigan. That's going to do it uh, for this week, but don't forget to check out the start of the basketball season tomorrow night with the annual Midnight Madness tip-off at the Tippin Gymnasium. You'll be able to check out this year's lineup and also see some great slam dunks. I'm Don Ersich, now back to Dave and Christy. Thanks, Don. Pittsburgh officials are asking area residents to help them pull off a little trick of their own this Halloween. They want area residents to celebrate it one day early. Similar to past years when the city moved 4th of July celebrations to July 3rd, trick-or-treaters will be asked to hit the streets from 6 to 8 p.m. on Saturday, October 30th, instead of the following night. Now, the main reason to bring the witching hour early isn't spooks and goblins. It's the treats. A city parks official says if kids eat too much candy Saturday, they'd have all day Sunday to get over their sugar high before heading back to school. And joining us now live from the TV5 Weather Center is Jen Bevavino with an update of tonight's weather. Thanks, Dave. Right now, conditions outside, outside stand as being quite severe. Um, at the moment, rain intermixed with hail is currently coming down. Just to debrief you on the severe thunderstorm watch, it is still in effect until 10 p.m. tonight. At the moment, there is a solid line of stores coming up through western Clarion County. Although nothing has yet been issued for Clarion County, keep this in mind. Expect winds to be as high as 50 miles per hour tonight with large hailstones and um, lightning proceeding. Thanks. Back to you, Christy and Dave. Thanks, Jen. And now over to Nani Lombard with the Entertainment Beat. Thanks. This week I'll be reviewing two movies. 
first I saw Double Jeopardy, starring Ashley Judd and Tommy Lee Jones. This movie has a great storyline, fast-paced excitement, and creative cinematography. To recap the movie, Double Jeopardy begins with Libby Parsons, played by Ashley Judd, and her husband Nick Parsons, played by Bruce Greenwood, borrowing a sailboat to get away and spend some time together. During the night, Libby awakes to find her husband missing and the boat covered in blood. Arrested and convicted of her husband's murder, Libby is forced to spend six long years in the state penitentiary, away from her son, whom she loves more than anything. While in prison, Libby calls her son and finds out that her husband is still alive. Libby's reaction after she hangs up the phone was my favorite scene in the movie. The director used slow motion and blurred camera shots to allow the audience to feel her torment and disbelief. And believe me, it did. Libby soon learns that in, from another convict about something called double jeopardy, a clause in the first, Fifth Amendment which states that one can, no one can be convicted of the same crime twice. Soon after, Libby is released from prison on parole. Now she is seeking revenge with Nick, but must battle her parole officer, played by Tommy Lee Jones, in order to reunite with her son. I like the way this movie got right into the story and never slowed down. I love Double, Je Double Jeopardy and recommend it to anyone who enjoys a quick-paced action adventure. I also saw the movie Superstar, starring Molly Shannon. This movie is basically a longer version of the Saturday Night Live sketch about Mary Catherine Gallagher. I enjoy watching the sketch on Saturday Night Live, but the movie is not as entertaining. It is about Mary wanting to win a talent contest so that she will gain the attention of school hunk Sky, played by Will Ferrell. She also has always wanted, wished of getting a kiss from Sky. I admit that there has been good movies done from Saturday Night Live sketches, for instance, Wayne's World. But after severing through Night at the Roxbury and this movie, I think that in the future, writers should avoid trying to turn Saturday Night Live sketches into full-length movies. For the Distinta Movie Review, I'm Nani Lombard. Thanks. Let's take a look at some of the activities going on this week. Thursday, October 14th, we'll have a guest recital featuring piano duettists Barbara and Gerhard Sersted in the auditorium at 8 p.m. On Friday, the UAB is sponsoring the Men's Basketball Inner Squad Mid-October Madness. This will be in the Tippin' Gym at 9 p.m. Also, Saturday, October 16th, the UAB will be having a bus trip to Washington, D.C. Sunday, in Hart Chapel, there will be a student recital featuring Cheryl Kulikowski, who will play the clarinet beginning at 3.15 p.m. Also, catch the faculty recital when Jeff Wardlaw plays the trombone in the auditorium at 7.30 p.m. On Tuesday, October 19th, stop in to see Gary Turak in the Gemma Multipurpose Room as he presents how you can discover the secrets of the world's most successful people. This starts at 9 p.m. For Entertainment Beat, I'm Carolyn Kelly, TV5 News. Thanks, Nani and Carolyn. And that about wraps it up for tonight's broadcast. Be sure to join us next Tuesday at 8 p.m. as Christy Desort and Brian Cook bring you continuing coverage of local, state, and national news. I'm Dave Marsh. For the entire TV5 News team, I'm Christy Herman. Good night.